Well, it's all good news for South Carolina, guys. Mike Dingle thought to have a dislocated shoulder, apparently a mild sprain. He's back on the bench. I just spoke with Dr. Walters, and Dr. Walters says there's a possibility Mike Dingle, all 245 pounds of him, could be back in this game. Ron? Well, Kevin, for the look over your shoulder, I don't know if I agree with the good doctor, but we are extremely pleased to see that, that things are, are well for him. And if you've ever had a shoulder pop out, more than one person has screamed over that situation. They hurt as much oh. when they pop them in oh. as they pop out. No doubt. Well, his replacement, DeBoer, has delighted this crowd from South Carolina. Steve Grant again with the stop. Let's take nothing away from Mike Dingle because he was having a great football team. And as a senior, you never like to leave your last game hurt. But Mike DeBoer has brought a new intensity to this football game. Usually it's a lineman or a linebacker, but DeBoer has really caused a change of pace in the football game right now. Four scoring drives, 50 yards plus, average time over five minutes. And a report on Grant has said he should be in double figures. He now has 16 tackles. Play action. They take it over the middle. Watson had lined up a tight end, and the fullback takes it out for 31 yards defensively. This is the offense that offensive coordinator Art Wilkins said they like to run. Let's bang, bang, bang. Let's fake at him and throw it right over the linebackers' heads right there. What a throw. And Ken Watson, 32. You never know where he's going to line up, Ron. He lines up at full top, fullback, hits you in the mouth, then he lines up at tight end and catches a pass behind you. Mario Henry comes to the ball game, number 83 at wide receiver. go with the fullback. That's a little face mask there, and there comes the flag in. Collins on the stop. And you can see him hitting himself in the head. He didn't mean to, but he grabbed it. Right. Strong safety Mike Collins. He's 5'11", 195. He plays with intensity. We've seen him all over the field making plays. He's an intense football player. Just a freshman also. He's going to be around for a while on this football team, but he reaches out, and he grabs it, and he uses it as leverage, and that's a 15-yard box behind him the screen he's going to come in he grabs the board this might be the only way to stop this guy and when you make the tackle with the face mask they're going to give you a 15 mark penalty on that, one. that one i agree with i don't know about the one i went for a while back. the person that west virginia is missing most tonight as you look at the penalty so far none against south carolina is jim gray the junior defensive tackle who has a turf toe team captain the first time under Don Nealon that a junior has ever held that position. He can't play this season. DeBoer loses his footing. Wanted to take it inside and tried to come outside. Falls down at the 45. And Grant was right there next to it. Well, let's give some credit here to Steve Red and Jim Gray and Gary Tillis, the front three of that defensive line for West Virginia. That's why Grant's making all these plays. They're tying up those offensive linemen. The two inside linebackers are the number one and two tacklers on this defense, and that's always the case for a West Virginia defense. The inside backers are going to be your tacklers. scrimmage that's Collins again and Michael the red shirt freshman from Huntington will stop that play for just about a two yard loss gonna be third down and the line to make for South Carolina is the 35 this is the situation that they've they produced a couple of first downs in the situation third and long Bob Shaw the defensive coordinator says if they're throwing the ball and we're not sacking them we're in for a long night and they have not had the sacks tonight it's been a key pass stat so far in this football game and now Bobby Fuller calls a timeout for South Carolina on this third down and 12. So with four minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the third quarter. That's defensive. South Carolina uses their first timeout. I think uh, Bob Shaw, that's a defensive coordinator for West Virginia. I think he wants to be everybody to know where he is on the sideline. He's got the X. He's got the red jersey. He calls them all over. They huddle up on the sideline. Very good football coach. 
said today he was not, he did not want his football players to get too mesmerized by the motion and the shifting and everything. He said, hey, let's just put the football down, let's tackle the guy with the football. Old-time football coach, I love it. You know, he also had a term that he used as we talked to him. He said it was a nose call, but he just rubbed his nose. What he was, what he was wanting the interior lineman to do is find that running back when he comes through the line of scrimmage so he couldn't slide through and get into the pattern. Well, he's grown up in that era. He, he coached at Michigan at the slant 34. He coached in the USFL. Tonight, South Carolina the offense has kept him off tackle. There you see the inside backers. He's got 17 tackles on the night. He's averaging 12. What a football game. But the reason he's got 17 tackles, Ron, because South Carolina's been on the game. They've been out there a long time, and they've been running a lot of plays at him. In fact, you know, one of the questions that Kevin asked Sparky at halftime was worried about the size of West Virginia and wearing South Carolina down, and it's almost been the opposite as far as offensively this season. Fuller with a pass after him tipped at the line of scrimmage. Steve Grant. Well, Steve Grant made the play, but let's give the credit to somebody who missed the assignment. Nobody even touched Steve on that one. Bobby called, called the timeout because he read a blitz on the play before. This time they give him the same defense, and you'll see Steve hit it on the run and just comes in clean. A back has to get there. It was DeBoer who did not get up in the hole, number 30 run. He was too close to the quarterback, and that caused the, the deflection. Darren Parker, very nice punt the first time out. That's Darrell of Whitmore, junior from... Front Royal, Virginia. Whitmore is just going to run away from this one, and it will bound inside the 10. South Carolina is there, and they'll bound it at the 8-yard line. It is DeMacy who was there. 43 yards on the kick. We'll take a break. <laughs> Gorgeous shot right there from our airship Shamu, a SeaWorld's traveling ambassador. And the captains tonight, Alan Judd and Anthony Stevenson, both are from Australia. Thanks, guys, for some beautiful shots this evening. I'll tell you, Thanksgiving night, any place, unless you're way, way down south, you just don't expect the kind of weather we've had here tonight. It's been wonderful. Rico Tyler, the first man through. The fullback takes it out over the 10. Well, South Carolina defense and Sparky Woods has to feel great about the way they're stopping the West Virginia running attack with just their base 4-3 defense. They were ready to go with the stud package, the five-man line, but they've been able to stop it. And, Ron, I just get the feeling ever since that interception down there, the wind has gone out on this West Virginia offense. Every time you see a play like that also, and somebody throwing the ball who normally doesn't, if they wait over one or two <laughs> counts, they're going to throw an interception. Michael Beasley, and he will take it to the 16, maybe the 17. Ernest Dixon is down on the bottom of the pile. He's a freshman from Fort Mill, South Carolina. We saw Ernest playing the fullback spot on the short yardage goal line situation. Rick Witt, the defensive coordinator, said he is the best athlete of all their linebackers. Just a freshman. He's not ready to play full time, but he's going to be a good football player for him. Giving Patrick Hitton a little blow. Three of seven on third down can do conversions for the Mountaineers. They need to take it to the 19. scrimmage maybe has a half yard Joe Reeves took his feet out from under him little change up again they came back in with their stud package as they call it the five defensive linemen and stuff the running game that's the idea keep the West Virginia offense a little off balance there you see it number 98 Cedric Bembry with the interception in the game plays off the nose and everybody comes in and cleans up Corey Miller, number 33, in from the hit, the defensive end who was uncovered. Misses it by almost a yard. 
two minutes and 54 seconds left in this third quarter. Don Nealon knowing that shortly his ball club has got to get some momentum back offensively. Herzog with another beautiful long kick. This is Brooks from the 38. Four yards in the punts from Greg Herzog. And let's go down to Kevin Kiley again. Kevin, what you got? Thank you, Ron. Uh, after the half with uh, West Virginia trailing, I talked to the Mountaineers coach, Don Nealon, and he told me that he was very surprised at the speed of the South Carolina defense, that he felt he had a weight advantage, but they were very quick and they were outrunning his offense. As you can see here in the second half, it's still true because West Virginia has not scored. Back up to you. South Carolina leading by 10. Double reverse. Brooks. Oh, he really got stuck at the 46 yard line. It's a gain of 11. It looked as though it was going to break for huge yardage and all of a sudden Mike Collins came out of nowhere and popped him. Little misdirection. They ran a little counter play and then the reverse to their best football player, Robert Brooks, number 49. Watch, you'll see a step, go back, and then the nice handoff to Brooks. And watch Brooks turn it up right here. Inside the block, turns it up full speed, and it takes on Collins. Find the little defensive back and run him over. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Collins is another one that we He's talked about play, before. Collins <laughs> loves to put the headgear down and go after it. Ellis comes on the blitz and they go with the board to the right side. A couple of yards and it closes up. Rick Dolly. He's only a freshman. New Creek, West Virginia, playing with a broken hand. West Virginia has had to change up a little bit to stop this powerful running game so far by South Carolina. They're cheating that strong safety up. Collins is blitzing occasionally, and they're taking advantage of the of the inexperience by Bobby Fuller. He needs to check to some of those plays. There you see another picture how it switched this half with the field position. It has just almost exactly opposite. Fakes it to the board this time. Throws the pass complete. And Brooks gets by the first, but won't get by Steve Grant. You see, Grant has a little calling card that he leaves there with him as he pops his head back down for the turf. Let's give credit to Art Wilkins. He's keeping this West Virginia defense off balance. There you see the big cushion Leroy Axon gives Brooks. Nice sharp route. Bobby Fuller puts it. A little fake, fake, get around him, but here's Grant. That's another tackle, but that's not the kind you want to go for first downs. Steve Grant, though, when he grabs you, you go down. Magnets in those hands. Yeah, he might have some stick them down there. I'm not sure. Here comes the blitz again. Fuller going on the post route, and he has Miller inside the 10. First and goal game time. Doug Ed on the stop. Well, this is what we talked about in the first half. On this blitz, the corners are playing off, and there's an impossibility to throw the post. Bobby Fuller just can't settle for a three-yard quick out all the time. The safety's coming. Take a chance. Get a big play right here. Nice protection. Deliver the ball on time, and Miller protects it from the doggette, and that's a big play down to the seven-yard line. Really a fine job by the receivers. He did. He just squared his back to it. He said, either come through me and we'll take the penalty, or I'm going to catch the football. Four. Inside the five, close to the three. Whitmore is somewhere on the bottom of that stack. He was the first man to make contact. This is the type of football that Sparky Woods is, wants to play when they get into the SEC. They have to be able to play this smash mouth type football. Look at the numbers by Fuller, 15 for 21. You know, when you look at him, he's not overpowering physically, doesn't have the great arm, but he makes a lot of good throws. He puts the ball in a spot where his guys can catch. Play smart, and the system is helping him play smart. <laughs> the board tries to play off the block of Watson, and that is some kind of defense for the Mountaineers. And you know it's either got to be Collins or Grant, and Collins was the first man out there to, to make the hit. That is the end of the third quarter. So here at Columbia, South Carolina, as we go to the final 15 minutes, South Carolina 20, West Virginia 10. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, from Ron Franklin, Gary Danielson, and Kevin Kiley. We are in the beautiful city of Columbia, South Carolina, on this Thanksgiving. Last year, we were up in Syracuse, West Virginia and Syracuse, and that one. 
situation. Third down and goal for the Gamecocks. The ball just inside the five. Fuller puts the pass up for Miller. And incomplete. A flag goes down. And that the crowd is cheering. I think it's going to be offense, Gary. I think he pushed off, well, trying I, to gain advantage. I think Eddie Miller pushed up. That's There's what no I'm saying. About yeah. it. Mike Collins is the guy who was trying to cover on him. Gets South Carolina. Loss of down. That's a fourth loss down. of down, so fourth down. It's a little fade pass to the outside. He's going to let it go, and Miller just going to run for it. But the coverage is pretty good. Collins is actually going to come and clean on the play as he reads the pass. The, the interference was on Doggett, though. Fuller lets the ball go. He thinks he has the play right there. And the interference, he pushed him. Doggett is who he pushed. Miller pushed. And that's who they called it on. Collins came over and cleaned up on it. 36-yard field goal attempt from the 26. Colin Mackey is good. Fourteen forty-nine left in the ball game, and South Carolina continues to put points on the scoreboard. Twenty-three to ten now. Well, fourteen points wins this football game, but West Virginia has to start producing some offense. I think they need to go to the passing game, throw some draws in there, do some things. Option and running the ball up the middle is no longer going to get it. South Carolina is really pumped up, and they smell victory. James Jett dropping off in a double safety with Adrian Morrell. And let's go down to Kevin Kiley. Well, you guys were talking about all the hard hitting out here and wondering about the reasons why. Number one, West Virginia is a very big physical team. There's been a lot of space, a lot of wide open running plays, a lot of guys getting running starts on this. Also, the West Virginia defensive secondary has been playing soft against the passing game of South Carolina, and that's given them a running start on some of these receivers like Jet. And the speed of the South Carolina defense means a lot in this, too. They have been running across the field, getting to the ball, and really unloading. And yes, you're right. They are pounding it down here, both teams. Back upstairs to you. Kevin, this is a short kickoff, which will be taken at the 24-yard line. And return to the 34 is Brian Moore. You know, we talked about back in the first half, or maybe it was here in the third, in the second half, the, the microphone of ours down on the sideline, and you could, could hear the smashing. And the contact has been really good on both sides of the field. Well, I think the change of pace has come from DeBoer, though. He's got everybody electrified in the crowd, the defense, everyone, the way he's run the ball. And the defense is just followed by his leadership so far. Alex Shook is in the ball game at fullback for the Mountaineers. That pass under thrown. Jet was coming back toward his quarterback, Jones, at the 50. Well, of course, Greg Jones is filling the shoes for Major Harris, who left a year early, and, and there was some question, you know, Don Neely even said, I don't know if we're going to miss Major that much, and I think he's come to realize that Major provided a lot of offense for them. You know, it kind of caught him by surprise. They thought they were well-situated at quarterback, but now Greg Jones has had to come in with no experience and take this football team. He has an opportunity tonight, being 13 points down, to steal a victory if he can throw the ball. Sets deep, and he drills this one, and now a late flag comes in. It's close to the first down to Darrell Mitchell, but that's going to be offensive holding against the Mountaineers. And Darrell Mitchell is still down. After he caught the pass, he was injured. Here you see the pass protection. We'll see who holds right here. It's the left tackle, Rich Brom, who grabs Miller. And that's how they get the, the pass off. He would have been beat clean inside. Nice move by Corey Miller to get inside. 14-31 remaining in the ballgame with a score 23 to 10. And the storyline, South Carolina scored on five of seven drives. Mackey, three of three in field goals this evening. In West Virginia, 153 yards rushing, but only seven this half. And Grant with 19 tackles, and let's also mention his teammate, because uh, Collins. Collins has got a total of 15 tackles in the ballgame. 34 between the two of them. 
Greg Ott, the athletic training coordinator for West Virginia, is helping his tight end, Daryl Mitchell, off the field. And now he's going on his own, which is always good to see. So Nate Ryan is a freshman from North Martinsville, West Virginia, into the ball game. Well, you see, they just got a bench penalty over there. The flag came down, and the official left sideline. Coach Nealon is upset with it. He doesn't know who was talking. He turned around and looked behind him to see who, who was the one who was yelling. Because it's going to be a tough 15 yard for now. You can see Coach well, Nealon turning is around. Back. That's right. He's looking for the culprit. I will say something about him. It, it, that's a class act all the way. And, Remember that's he'd... that's going to be tacked on to the other holding penalty. Oh, exactly. And now they've got you know if you could sell this amount of real estate in Columbia, <laughs> you could make a chunk. They got to go all the way out to the 45, and the line of scrimmage is the 13. I have a feeling Don will find out exactly who the mouthpiece was. Don't you? Well, has been the whole season. They're shooting themselves in the foot again this year, this game, and it's bothering. You'd like to shoot somebody in the mouth right now. Pass comes to Beasley, and he breaks it out. One man was between Beasley and the touchdown line. Surratt makes the stop. It's good for 18. And for a moment, Gary, it looked as though it might go for 85. It was a very safe call, a little swing, and it was a screen pass. The line's going to come out. There you see number 75, Lorenzo Stiles. He leads Beasley. Beasley's very patient right here, just finds his blocking. He just takes it up the sideline. And now they have an opportunity to pick it up. It's third and 14. That's too much on a very simple play. Shook and Beasley in an eye formation. They set the screen, and he's going to be called for grounding on this. There was nobody around. He called the same play to the right that they had just run to the left. This time, there was nothing there. And Jones tried to get rid of it and gets called. Kurt Wilson, number 92, was all over the play. Kurt Wilson, number 92, they let him go a little bit too fast. He gets him, he throws it away, and he throws it to the opposite side of the screen. You're going to get grounding in that play. Wilson, number 92, is the emotional leader of this football team. He's playing in this game with a broken wrist. You can see it on his right hand, and he gets in there to get the big force and the penalty. Greg Herzog waits for the snap back at the two-yard line. Boy, these two punters had put on an exhibition tonight. Looks all the way back to the 32. Brings it back to the 47. So let's take a timeout. 13.50 left to play and the Gamecocks by 13. Thanks to some of the most productive technology in the world, everyone can now afford some of the most productive technology in the world. two times that ESPN has been here. South Carolina not only has lost Gary, they have been shut out. 59 to nothing and 45 to nothing. They didn't look exactly welcome. So why, why'd they treat us so <laughs> no, good? They, <laughs> Ken Watson on the carry. And we're joking when we say that because the, the administration, the coaches and everybody at, at this institution have just welcomed the crew with open arms. They have been truly outstanding and very helpful. West Virginia needs to stop very, very badly. They have to get the ball back. They can't afford to give up any more points in the fourth quarter right now. It's been very tough. They haven't scored a lot. They need stops. They got to pitch a shutout from here on in there. Fuller 
Nobody behind him. Puts it out in the flat. That's Watson. And they're going to say incomplete. Didn't hold on to it. <laughs> Ken looks up and says, oh, but I didn't trap it. It'll be third down. And the line to make is the West Virginia 44-yard line. It's been the ball control for the South Carolina offense that's really turned the game around. They now have rushed the ball 40 times for 145 yards. At halftime, they'd only had a 22, so they've taken over control of the line of scrimmage. It's been the key to this football game. Another key is the fact they had 37 sacks into tonight's ball game. They've done a great job of protecting the quarterback. Fuller dumps it out. The board juggles it once, breaks off the tackle, and he's going to have the first down. The key to that, as Ron mentioned, the protection has been the key. They drop back, they're throwing short, they're taking control of the game because of the running game. This time they block Ellis. Watch, number 66. He's blocked by Ike Harris. He moves his feet, he pushes, he pushes, and Ellis cannot get around him. Good job by Ike Harris, number 60. Wide base and push. The boar again, boy, does he get stuck by Grant. Grant has just had an unbelievable night. That puts him at 20 tackles. We mentioned that his teammate Collins with 15. The guys are just an incredible football player. And the thing is, he doesn't just come up and get you with his arms. He sticks He's really strong hands, too. You know, no one gets away from his tackles. Once he reads it, he ducks inside. As DeBoer reads it, Grant reads it just as fast. And when he throws it down, they just do not get out of his hands. He explodes through the tackle. A little draw play to the board, and he's going to take this one around the 36. Rick Dolly, defensively for the Mountaineers. Clock is running as we go under 12 minutes left of this one. 23 to 10 as we look at the total yards, and this will tell you a lot. First half, and now in the second half, West Virginia only 55 total yards. Well, well, hold on a second. They've only run the ball five times for seven yards in this half. Check into an auto. It looks like a blitz drill. Blitz coming up the middle. Grant is after him, and he just throws it to the most convenient spot. Nobody was there. He got a receiver close. But Ellis was coming on the blitz, and also Steve Grant. I think we should ISO Grant the rest of the time. We just stay with him right here. It's going to lead to most of the action, Ron. We're on him. And he comes through, hits it on time, right into the backfield. Nobody touches him again. Look at that agility. And Bobby Fuller does a good job of just getting rid of the ball and avoiding the big loss right there. A field goal attempt would be 55 yards. So number one, Darren Parker comes on. They had to have the stop there. They couldn't give up any more yards. They can't afford to give up any points. They still have time to come back in this football game. You got to look at Whitmore just a moment ago, number 11. He would like to have a good return on this one. He has gone toward the far sideline as they have allowed the 25 second clock to run down. The West Virginia doesn't have to take this. South Carolina looking for a delay and now West Virginia is going to say nope let's make them kick it high. Maybe they'll kick it into the end zone. <laughs> Tommy Boy, saw the officials moving it back down the field and says, wait a minute, I do have an option here. It's not that complicated, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mitchell also keeps looking over to the sideline as he's looking for, he is guessing on the play, that they're going to kick it to the far side. And they kick it high and to the other side away from him. South Carolina's going to try to down it, and they do at the one-yard line. DeMacy. You ever, you ever heard the expression, sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't? Well, I'll tell you, Rod, you just took the words out of our mouth. Sometimes they bounce the other way. Sometimes they bounce right to you. You know, they're on a, a big home football game tonight. They've been shut out, as you said before, and this time right in his hands. Let's take a break. <laughs> Three to ten. That's our score with 11:04 to play. And look at that field position. 
talked about just a few moments ago how it has flip-flopped from first half to second. And they've only, they haven't had the ball a lot this time. They've been shut down, and you see the stud package in the five-man line. They're going to stop that run again. Hit in the backfield. He did get back out. That's not a safety. They stopped him at the one-foot line, and Bembry is the man who hit him first. Well, Bembry's having a good time tonight. Interception. He gets that to end play zone's been great for him. <laughs> I hope his parents are sitting at that end zone over there because he's had all the action down there. Offside, and in the neutral zone against South Carolina. Five yards. Someone lined up in the neutral zone. You can see it on the left top of your screen. Number 99, Gerald Dixon, was the guy lined up in the neutral zone. But look at this one. This was a good run just to avoid the safety right there yeah. because, boy, Corey Miller came in and could have got the sack, and Bremery could have got the safety. Jones rolls the pocket, and his receiver had fallen down. Mike Baker couldn't see his number, but he's the one that they wanted. Take a look at this. It tells the story. First of all, the last three. Those are the only snaps that they have had until this series in the entire second half. Gary. With 11 minutes to go in the second half, you can see it in the second half. Three and out, minus two yards and a punt. Three and out, minus, uh, nine yards and a punt. And three and out, minus five yards and a punt. And look where they've had the ball. 19 to eight in the 35 and now the one. And at the top of that list, they scored what the first two times they had the football. It looked like everything they dialed early was going to work and now they can't find anybody. Draw play hit in the backfield by Corey Miller. Blackwell, I beg your pardon, 93 rather than 33. Patrick Blackwell is going to submarine in here and we get the hand on it. Number 93. You'll see him read the play. He beats the sing and he comes in and gets Beasley and he lays out and gets him right around the ankles. Corey Miller ended up getting the stop at the end of it, but it was Blackwell that made the play. So Garrett Ford is coming to the lineup. And, you know, I was surprised when I saw their depth chart. Last year, six touchdowns, 733 yards, and he is the third team tailback this year. And he gained 119 against this team. Pass is thrown, almost intercepted by Inman. Dixon was pressuring. there's going to be some people in the SEC that are going to be surprised when they play in this thing. Sparky ever gets his program together. This he is will. a Giants. He will. He's a very good coach. He's got a very good staff. Concern here is the fact that Herzog is not able to take a full 15 yard drop. He hurried it and the kick. Well West Virginia is going to get a break here because it was away from Brooks and it's going to roll dead around the 42 yard line. That's 53 yards on that one. Nine minutes, 40 seconds to play in our ball game, and South Carolina 23, West Virginia 10. Well, the West Virginia defense, they need a turnover. They need to create something good for their offense. Just like DeBoer went in the game and kind of ignited the other team, the West Virginia defense needs to do the same thing right now for the offense. to the board and they keep throwing it to Eddie Miller defensive back fell down and knocked out of bounds by Collins let's go down to Kevin Kiley Ron a few moments ago you saw a player on the South Carolina team down the ball on the one yard line of punt number 13 Dickie DeMacy last year when Todd Ellis the all time great quarterback was hurt DeMacy was the backup quarterback he came in the team did not do well he did not play well and he took a lot of heat this year he's a linebacker playing on the special teams and contributing quite a bit to this South Carolina team a great story about a kid who just kept coming back upstairs to you good point Kev. 931 to play again they fake it to the big running back and now here comes Fuller very wisely goes out of bounds at the 19 because Grant was closing in on him but that's not only the first down six more yards added on I don't think Bobby Fuller has made a mistake in this football game he may not be the most talented overpowering athlete at quarterback but he just does so many things well the offensive line gives him protection he breaks out of the pocket and there's no one there look at 
smartly goes to the outside. This time, Grant doesn't make the tackle. There's a story right there. <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby Fuller makes it to the sideline. the middle with DeBoer and he piles down to the 15 yard line it's a pick up of four Dingo watching from the sideline he was the starter tonight but the one two punch DeBoer after Dingle but in case you missed it he injured his shoulder he's talking to the trainer he was not smiling about an hour ago and I think all the memories go through your mind that this is your last football game and you go out and you can't play and you'd like to be out there DeBoer now 73 yards Dingle left the contest with 58. Great production for the tailback position tonight. Fuller dumps it out of the backfield and DeBoer at the 10 yard line. You know, I think his first option, his primary, he was going to run a post and the receiver got held up and and the board was his secondary. He was did it the not? same play earlier in the in, in the game when he was going to hit rush number 14 when he came in. He looked down the middle. It wasn't there. Very calmly, he went to his check down. Bobby Fuller is just executing the game plan. You got to give credit to the coaches for that. But Bobby Fuller is doing the job on the field between the white lines. There you see the hand signal. Gives it to his receivers. Touch in the head. So what he's looking up at it is a 25 second clock so they can use as much off as they can that running play will not pick up the first down the thought there was though we're in field goal position this is a big three points we don't want to make a mistake throw the ball in the end zone get it intercepted three points really changes the game well the crowd is screaming go for it but your point is even better 16 points rather than two touchdowns two extra points and you're beating it right uh, it, it, it forces West Virginia to play for two each time they score if they score two touchdowns they only got 10 men on the field they better be careful Colin Mackey set to attempt the field goal and they start signaling wait a minute let's call time out so they take it South Carolina with only one left but they're not bothered by that situation right now because only 730 left to play I mentioned early on in the ball game when both teams were moving up and down the field that uh, it was a good promo for tomorrow night's NIT championship game between a running wild Arkansas Razorback team and a running wild Arizona basketball team and uh, that's the way it started but all of a sudden the wildness won out of West Virginia offensively <laughs> by the way joining us be sure and join us for that championship game tomorrow night nine o'clock Eastern Time Arkansas number two in the nation they handled Duke by ten points last night and Arizona one huge over Notre Dame by the way, joining us on this Thanksgiving football telecast, Airship Shamu, the Goodwill Ambassador for SeaWorld. They have parks in Florida, California, Ohio, and in Texas. Part of the crowd of almost 70,000 looking on here tonight. And I can promise you the South Carolina fans are not going to leave early on this one. They're having fun. He's kick. He's perfect tonight. That makes it a 16-point ball game with 7:25 to play, and that ties his own record, which was against Navy back in 1988, the second week in November. Well, Ron, the task facing West Virginia, first of all, is to come up with some field position here on this kickoff and give a little protection to Jones and just see, give Greg Jones one more shot at trying to put some points on the board. They're going to have to go for two if they get in the end zone. They're going to have to do it twice. Probably already in a mode right now where they're going to have to onside kick it. But as an offensive player, as a quarterback, and as a coach, you have to just keep thinking positive. 725, it looks bad. You just got to keep thinking, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. He only uses a three-step drop to kick it off. And it's going to come to Morrell on the run at the 17. Continues back toward the middle. He'll bring it to the 33-yard line. I 
I would say they're already in a position where they got to have to go no huddle. They have to get up at the line of scrimmage. Just take a fling at it. You practice it every day. You go to camp. You do it. This is the, this is the reason you practice it. Jones pumps, then delivers over the middle. Tip, tipped, and intercepted by Reed. And our student athlete of the game will take it to the 31-yard line, showing that he reads well both the books and the pass pattern. Greg Jones just bird-dogged his receiver the whole time, stayed with him, he pumped a couple of times, and a player that looked open got intercepted by the backside linebacker. There you see him, he's on the hash, number 44, Greg Jones. He turns to his right, and he looks, and then he gets back into the protection. He goes to his left, he's reading Greg Jones, and then a throw that looks wide open, all of a sudden he sticks up the left hand and he gets the interception. That's directly result of the quarterback looking at the receiver the whole time. So Gerald Dixon with some pressure. The numbers on Reeves tonight, nine tackles and one interception. By the way, Reeves will graduate this May. He's going to be in the sports administration. He's going to graduate. DeVore breaks off the first tackle and then takes it for four more. There you see the guy, number 44, 6'3", 235, had the big interception that could ice this football game and get another winning season for Sparky Woods. And I tell you, he was really proud of that fact that they had won. Nine tackles tonight. You know, one of the things Sparky told us is he, this team is on the right path. They're only a step away from greatness, he believes. But this team will never improve as much as they have between last year, 1989, and where they are this year, 1990. Very proud of his football team. DeBoer with the sweep. He'll go to the 21. That's shy of the first. Well, I don't know. And where they're going to spot it here, he's very close to the first down. Gary Tillis. Sophomore Bancroft, West Virginia. Don't you get the idea about DeBoer that he could play a double hitter in football just as easily as he could play a double hitter in baseball? He just pops up. He's ready to go. Let's play two. <laughs> I also get the feeling with all the attention that he is drawing, I would think he'd have a decent arm as being a catcher. If he ran one of the sweeps to the right and then pulled up and threw a pass, the receiver might look like the first guy out to the worker. Yeah, but I don't think we're going to see any more happen. No, 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 not at this point. <laughs> just a thought. I got a, you. I got for you. thought next year. <laughs> the board to the left. Has the first down and is spotted at the 14. Kwame Smith, who's in replacing Doggett at the cornerback spot, will make the play defensively. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know if Nebraska offered him a scholarship to play football, but they should have. This guy can play football, big-time football, too. He takes it, he stretches it, he reads his blocking, and then he cuts. Watch him make a cut inside Whitmore right here. Makes it and splits the two. Nice block by Mario Henry outside the freshman, number 83, also to help out his partner, the fellow freshman. DeBoer. Again, breaks the initial tackle. And you know, I'd love to hear from the coaches when they go back and grade it how many initial hits he broke in this ball game. Well, his leverage, I mean, because he's not so tall, he just hits, and they never get a real good, clear shot at him. Look at this. They've had 30 plays for plus four yards in this game. That's an incredible stat right there. You know, that doesn't give you just the one long gainer. All night they've been hit you with those body blows, and that's just an incredible testament to the type of football that Sparky Woods wants to play here in the next upcoming year. Hand off to Watson. Boy, does he get whacked at the line of scrimmage. Gary Tillis hit him. As South Carolina tried to cross him up. Hand it <laughs> off to the first man through, and... Uh, <laughs> They got crossed up. Well, you kind of feel sorry for Watson. He's been blocking all game, you know, and he's just been out there. He's helping his fellow backs. He gets the ball, and what happens? There's no blocking this time. You know, <laughs> maybe the real reason is he's the one that usually does all the blocking. Nice tackle right there. So it's going to be a third down, and the line to make is the three-yard line as we're about to go into four minutes left to play in this one. Bob is waiting. He's going to call a timeout used all of the clock and took the time out. So Bobby Fuller comes over to talk to Sparky Woods and the offensive coordinator Art Wilkins. Last talk more about what's going to happen on Saturday but right now let's take this break.
Murphy. Our luck. Joe Tyler not real happy over this one. Senior from Pittsburgh. Hoping that the Mountaineers could come into here and make this a 5-6 season. But right now they are very close to dropping their sevens. We have only 3.53 left to play in South Carolina on top 26 to 10. Fuller throws it very low for Watson. And I think he was just trying to throw it safely because there were two Mountaineers around Watson at the time. He had a corner route to the right side to David Pitchko that he, that he wanted to go to. It was covered, and again, he made a good decision. He didn't force it in there, no interception, went for the scramble, wasn't there, and tossed it away. He's really been, you know, the offensive line has done a great job, but Bobby Fuller has executed the game plan so well. well let's see if he can break his own record. Here, Colin Mackey trying to make it five on the night, and he has just done it. That's a new career high for him with five field goals. This one from 27 yard. And a record for the school as well. South Carolina 29 and West Virginia 10. And let's check in with Kevin Kiley. Get what you got for us. Oh, I got a good one here, Ron. Thanks very much. And happy Thanksgiving to Todd Ellis, holder of 29 school records here at South Carolina. And Todd, pretty good effort by the team tonight. Excellent effort. This was a big, big ball game. Obviously, pride the end of the season. This will make them the winningest senior class, uh, Kevin, in the history of the school. Means a lot to them. How about Bobby Fuller now? He had to follow a pretty good quarterback. It had to be tough for him. Well, he knows. He's got a lot of poise. got that little swagger in his step that makes him a quarterback. He's done a good job here, and he'll be a great senior oh, next year. Right, now, how's your leg? And I hear rumors about the World League of American Football. You're going to play in uh, or Taipei or somewhere? He's doing good. Probably be the uh, Kuwait Tigers quarterback, I think, is what it's going to be, Kevin. But if they get it off the ground, I should be there and sign with them uh, sometime in the next month. All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Ron? Thanks, gentlemen. Remember last year, he had his leg in a cast and came up and helped us out on the telecast and did a really good job. <laughs> Those quarterbacks, you know, they just like to keep talking. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie, we got to say something for the linebackers of, these, of this world. <laughs> now we got 333 left to play in this one. Darren Studstill is coming to quarterback. He's a freshman from Riviera Beach, Florida. They go with the running play, and Corey Miller steps right up into the hole, and Makes quite a hit in Garrett Ford. Scott Nealon told us he wanted to use Studstill a little bit tonight, but I don't think this is the type of format he had in mind when he wanted to play him. He wanted to do a little option football with him. There you see his stats on the year. He's thrown 41 passes. Just a freshman, runs a 4 5 40. They expected that he has a possibility of helping him in the future, but they wanted him to come in the situation in the game still close, not this type of a game. Tough night for Theron Ellis. Early in the ball game, now he's limping. But you saw early in the ball game, he injured his finger really badly when he's making the tackle, and his uh, room, his uh, teammate crashed in against the headgear. That's Perdurko making the reception, takes it over midfield to the 45. And the clock is stopped momentarily with 3:03 left. To play. Another side here's Hemrick, the senior, senior. He's going out the right way. And Don Ellis said, "Senior class, the winningest in history." This senior class has been through a lot, as Sparky told us. They, they, this team has seen just about everything. I mean, we could go through it. This the steroid problem, their coach, you know, dying, Coach Morrison, they've gone through a lot and they survived. And they're going to be better men for it. You know, this is a, another big recruiting year for them, and the way they have things going for themselves. Um, I look for South Carolina to be an awfully good football team next year. Well, I think they've got the foundation laid. They've changed the mentality around here. There's a real work ethic going. They've got people with the mentality of playing tough, hard-nosed football and practicing hard. That's been the toughest thing they've had to get, is get a practice habit from these players. Jared Ford puts a head down. He's going to have the first down, plus it on five. Kirk Wilson is holding on. And we're about to go under two minutes to play in this. We're going to stop for a moment while the change moves on. 
I want to make sure that we say a special thanks to Shelley Poe, the sports information director from the Mountaineers of West Virginia, and to Kerry Tharp, who is the sports information director here in Columbia for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. This was a short week for them as well as far as putting together information. Both have been extremely helpful. We appreciate it. Stud still. Going to try to run it. He'll pick up a couple. Don't forget, coming up, we'll have the Visa players of the game, one from each team. Saturday night, we will be down in Miami, Florida, to take a look at the, the Canes against the Orangemen of Syracuse. But preceding that, 4 o'clock Eastern time, it's Virginia and Virginia Tech. That's our doubleheader on Saturday. Of course, it all starts with game day at 11.30 Eastern time. That pitch going to be fumbled by Ford, and that cannot be advanced behind the line of scrimmage. Going to excite the crowd, but they'll bring it back to the 30-yard line. Keith McDonald picked it up and ran with it. Beyond the line of scrimmage yet. Now, if he had picked it off in the air, he could have returned, but it hit the ground. A little option play. Darren comes out here on the option and strung out. And he makes a decent pitch, but Beasley right here, number 32, Garrett Ford, just doesn't get his hands on it. And it is behind the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be down right there. And with a minute 40 to go, this game is about over. So that's three turnovers against the Mountaineers tonight. Wright Mitchell, sophomore from Atlanta, comes in at quarterback with a minute 40 left. Four, still hard charging away. He's up around the 35. I think they're going for 100 yards. I, I, I have to believe that they know how close he is. They want to get him that 100-yard game. Lots of great holiday weekend programming. NIT Championship tomorrow night, Arizona and Arkansas. Then on Saturday, game day at 11.30, followed by the doubleheader, 4 o'clock and then 7 o'clock. And then Sunday night, Kansas City and San Diego. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann with that. So stay with us here on the Total Sports Network, ESPN. West Virginia is going to go 4-7 and seven on this season. Pictures tell you who is on top of this one. Six and five, the Gamecocks will be. George Rush comes into the ball game with 14. And he's going to get a carry. Turns the corner. Has one man to beat, and the tackle is made at the 39 yard line by Tim Newsom. George Rush, also a senior, playing his last game right here. Very valuable player for this football team. Good receiver. Getting the chance to finish out the career on the field. It's got to be a great throw for him. 23 yards in the carry. And the clock now under 15 seconds. Another play. Crowd is going to count this one down for us. The South Carolina Gamecocks finish the season at six and five as they defeat West Virginia by a final score of 29 to 10. I don't know if they're going to get a beach bowl bid or not, but this is a pretty good football team, and they're going to do nothing but get better. Their offensive line showed that they're going to improve. You saw the style of football that Sparky Woods wants to play. Rough, hard-nosed football. They took it away from a pretty good football team, a team that has pushed around Syracuse and Penn State early in this year and lost. So 29 to 10, South Carolina has won it. Well, Kevin is with uh, the winning head coach. Let's go down to him real quickly. All right, thanks, Ron. Sparky Woods. Sparky, you came in here. You took over a program that was reeling. You've had two winning seasons. Now this has to be a satisfying moment for you. I'm really proud of our seniors. Uh, they, they've been through a great deal, loss of their coach, and then all the things that's happened at South Carolina. Really proud of the South Carolina Gamecocks. The stage showed up here tonight. 
support us. I just, it's, uh, we've got a great place. We really don't have an excuse. We ought to have a great program here. When you took over here, I mean, what was the major obstacle in pulling it together with all the things that had happened around the program? You know, Kevin, most, most people are 30 years of age before they experience the death of somebody close to their family. And this football team had lost their football coach just two days before signing day. Went through a whole lot of change. We had an NCAA investigation thing that we had to overcome. We joined the Southeastern Conference. A lot of things have happened in 18 months. It's credit to the kids. Football is supposed to teach you a whole lot. Now, these football players have had a chance to learn a great deal of, of, of sad things as well as happy things. I'm glad we were able to end up this regular season game like this. Well, Sparky, you and your coaching staff deserve a lot of credit, too. Thank Congratulations. You, Thank you. Glad we could win one on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Sparky Woods in South Carolina. Ron? Well, that was the comment of the reason, as I mentioned, they had been shut out the last two times they had been on. And probably the other comment we should make to him is he's got a darn good catcher on this football team. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll come back with the players of the game and wrap it up right now. Let's pause for this. Your taste. There's no going back. Ron Franklin with Gary Danielson and Kevin Kiley in Tallahassee. All of a sudden, it's back to a 14 point game. Which seems like a lot until you're talking about these two offenses. <laughs> we still have 12:38 left to play. Let's see what the Seminoles do. Oh my goodness, what a hit! Lawrence Dossi on the return. Let's take another look at that touchdown. First time they used the shotgun and almost backfired on him right here. The snap wasn't that bad. One bobbling catch by Matthews, and then he goes to the tight end Kirkpatrick, and another bobbling catch. The one-hander by the second-team All-American Kirkpatrick and their leading receiver. Watch Kirkpatrick go from the right side of your screen across. Carruthers tries to pick him up, but the throw is up high, and that makes it a 14-point game. And Steve, yep, that's the guy. The tight end, throw it, loop, loop it over. Yes. Let's play now. Come on, defense. He put on the visor at halftime. Maybe he's a little superstitious. First time we've, in all the games that we've done at night, he's never worn the visor. Remind me, next time I, if I ever get to play golf with him, I'm going to grab that visor first and then bet him. Throw it in the lake. 